The SKS is one of the most widely manufactured rifles in history. For this reason, prices have remained fairly low, making the SKS about the best value you could find in a centerfire semi-automatic rifle. Wars have been fought and won with this rifle, whose lineage can be traced forward in time to the AK-47 and many of today's modern rifles. This 80-year-old design is both reliable and proven. Today we'll be taking a brief look at the SKS and two aftermarket stock options from Tapco and Archangel. Most SKS woodstocks are quite dark in color, but this particular woodstock was chemically stripped and refinished with tongue oil, which is why it has such a light blonde color. There are certain functional advantages to the design of the original wood stock, making it understandable if a guy prefers original wood. It's clear behind the receiver, which allows for the rearward movement of the cover as needed for field stripping. It's clear around the trigger guard and trigger release pin. This allows the trigger assembly to be removed in the field, which is required to remove the barreled action from the stock. The wood stock accommodates either the blade or spike bayonet, which is required to retain the included cleaning rod. The front sight does require a tool for windage and elevation adjustments to establish your 100 meter zero. The rear sight is adjustable to 1000 meters, but I wouldn't have much confidence in that past about 300. The butt stock has a small compartment with a spring assisted cover that's used to store the handy cleaning kit. Ergonomically, the original wood stock positions the trigger finger on a downward angle that's clear of the safety lever when in the firing position, and where the safety lever interferes with the trigger finger when in the safe position. Ergonomically, this is functional and feels very natural. The biggest shortcoming of the original wood stock for the SKS is exactly that, its shortcoming. The length of pull is appropriate for a person of no more than about 5 feet tall. This positions the thumb of the trigger finger where it contacts your nose when the rifle is shouldered. For this reason you can actually punch yourself in the nose when the rifle is fired. And a fix is available for this in the form of a sleeved rubber butt pad stock extension. While there is nothing really wrong with the original wood SKS stock, you can't deny the fact that it's a little on the frumpy side, making it hard to resist the temptation to dress up this rifle. Both the Tapco and Archangel stocks are plastic which is impact resistant and weatherproof. And both stocks introduce a pistol grip which gives the SKS more of a modern combat rifle appearance and feel. The pistol grip repositions the hand well below your face and resolves the problem with the thumb in the face from the original wood stock. Neither of these two stocks have a storage compartment in the butt stock, but the Tapco does have storage in the pistol grip, although it's not large enough to hold the original cleaning kit. The Tapco stock does accommodate the bayonet and cleaning rod but the Archangel does not. The upper Tapco forehead is also plastic and includes a weaver style rail for mounting optics, although this is not the best way to do that on an SKS. So while the Archangel does not have a scope rail on the upper forehead, it also does not tempt you to put one there in the first place, which is good. When aligning the sights, the upper forend on the woodstock and on the Archangel is low enough to see the entire front sight globe. The scope rails on the Tapco forend interfere with the front sight periphery and may leave you inclined to consider cutting or grinding them off. The pistol grip of the Tapco stock feels the best between them because it has a palm swell that keeps the trigger finger right of the safety when in the firing position. The Archangel grip is more centered to the rifle and drives your trigger finger directly into the safety which is more than just a little annoying. You are forced to reach around the safety with your trigger finger and that just doesn't feel natural. In this regard the Tapco grip feels far more natural and comfortable. But the pistol grip on the Archangel stock is positioned far enough behind the trigger to allow for the removal of the trigger assembly which is required for field stripping. The Tapco grip is positioned so far forward that the grip retention bolt must be unscrewed and the grip removed to release the trigger assembly and separate the barreled action from the stock. Both rear stocks are adjustable for length of pull. 
The Archangel in the collapsed position is about the same length of pull as the original wood, but the Tapco does go a little shorter. Both the Archangel and Tapco extend to reasonably accommodate the tallest North American. Between these two stocks, only the Archangel has an adjustable cheek rest. Which of these two stocks might be best for you will depend upon what is important to you as functional compromises will need to be made if you choose either of them. There's no bayonet with the Archangel meaning you can't have a cleaning rod either, but you can field strip from the trigger on up without special tools. You will, however, need to remove the barreled action from the stock in order to remove the receiver cover. The Tapco stock will allow the removal of the receiver cover, but you cannot remove the barreled action from the stock without removing the pistol grip so you can forget about doing this in the field. But you will have the bayonet handy even if just to hold your rifle up while you wait for deer or maybe take a break. Cleaning rod will also be there where you probably won't lose it. If your plan is to hunt medium to large game with your SKS, you may be required to remove the bayonet. Some states and provinces don't allow bayonets for hunting. You may be required to remove it anyways, which may swing you in favor of the Archangel. If complete field stripping is important to you, that's one more reason to choose the Archangel. With no bayonet hanging off the end of your barrel, the rifle will probably be a little more accurate, so that might help you justify its removal. If illegal in your hunting area though, the bayonet comes in handy at least as a field expedient rifle rest. If you don't want to give up your bayonet, then you're better off with the Tapco. It would seem that a crossbreed that incorporates the best features of both of these stocks would be the clear winner. If the Archangel had a palm swell on the grip, allowed a bayonet, and allowed the removal of the receiver cover, it would be all you could ever ask. Now it wouldn't be hard to cut about a quarter inch away from behind the receiver cover using a hacksaw, and that would allow the removal of the receiver cover on the Archangel. At least that's one down. If the pistol grip on the Tapco stock was just moved back to clear the trigger assembly, that stock would do it all. But I see no simple modification we can make at home that would resolve that problem for us. Since you could remove the bayonet to improve accuracy regardless of which stock you use, the accuracy advantage of that option can be made with any of these stocks. In this case there is no clear winner and compromises must be made with either of these two stock options. For complete field stripping, I prefer the Archangel stock, but for the improved pistol grip and bayonet, I actually prefer the Tapco. I'd be interested in which of these stocks you prefer and why, and I invite you to post your responses in the comments below. And thank you for watching.